Well, U.S. President Donald Trump says this can be the generation to end the country's opioid epidemic. On Thursday, he declared the opioid crisis a public health emergency. And nothing paints a picture of the scale of this crisis like this next story. Two teenagers from the same neighborhood died of the drugs within an hour of each other. I spoke with their parents whose lives have been forever changed. We wanted to have two children because we wanted them to have each other. And now Matthew's an only child. I'll never be the person I was. 18-year-old Dustin Menning and 19-year-old Joseph Abraham had so much potential. Those are his football trophies are up there. They had the graduation. He was going camping with his girlfriend. He was in a great place. Joe was a very sensitive young man. Uh, he was um, funny. He had a big heart. In this neighborhood on the outskirts of Atlanta in America's South, a dark sorrow shared by two families. At 6.09 a.m. on May 26, paramedics called to this house. Dustin Manning was found dead. Less than an hour later, 800 meters that way, the same situation. Joe Abraham found dead on the floor. Two teenagers, childhood friends, both victims of the opioid crisis. Started yelling and yelling and yelling, Joe, Joe, you know, wake up, man, come on, man. As I walked through that door, it was just almost surreal. He was on 911 on the phone call. I just came back to him and I said, we can't fix this. When I opened the door, he was crouched over on his bed. I, it looked like he was tying his shoes almost. I went over to him. I touched him and he was cold. Dave and Kathy Abraham and Greg and Lisa Manning share the same pain. Their families torn apart. Their sons, teammates in Little League, both started dabbling in drugs in middle school. What drove him, do you think, to, to the drugs? He told well, us partially. that the drugs was what gave him the out. It made him not feel whatever the depression was making him feel. We're giving these, these opiates to kids who are getting their wisdom teeth out, mm -hmm. and they get them and they like them, and then they have like, you know, the pain ain't there, but they make them feel good, then they take them, and before they know it, they're addicted. Both sets of parents got their sons into treatment centers. The night before they died, Dustin was at a treatment meeting while Joe was at a friend's place. So just to be clear, the boys weren't out together the night before, but it appears that they may have bought these drugs by the same dealer. Exactly. Yes. So it looked like the same pill, essentially, the same wrapping. Yes. Yes. Toxology reports found both teens ingested a toxic mix of heroin and fentanyl, which can be lethal in small doses. So you've done your research. You know how much fentanyl it took to kill him. Just explain it for us. Well, uh, according to the coroners, the amount that was in his system was about three grains of salt. That's it? E the equivalent of that. That's all it took? That is all that took to fentanyl to kill our son. And it happened pretty quickly? He said 20. within about 20 to 30 seconds after he snipped it, it was, he was gone. They welcome President Trump's declaration of a public health emergency, which officials say will allow the federal government to waive some regulations, give states more flexibility in how they use federal funds. I think it's a step, maybe a small step, but a step in the right direction. This is happening to middle-class America and to, our, and to our, this generation of, of children. I never thought that I'd never get to see him grow old. You know, it's just the, it's not the natural order of things. And that's been a real hard pill to swallow. Um. And those uh, courageous parents are now sharing their story in schools um, to prevent other parents from going through the same tragedy. That does it for this edition of CNN Newsroom. I'm Linda Kincaid. Inside Africa is just ahead, but first I'll be back with the headlines.